All right, folks, welcome back to the shop. Things look a little different around here because they are. I'm not loading 28 gauge or 410 right now. Uh, we've got the Lee load all 12 gauge press. Um, you know, don't shoot me <laughs> because it's not a, uh, you know, some people say quote a, a real reloader. Let me tell you, it, it does the job for what I'm doing. And, and what I'm reloading today is uh, two and three quarter inch. Uh, these are some Rio holes. These are actually, they were once fired. Um, I got these from the ski club, uh, just walking around, taking them out of the bins. So uh, like in other videos where I talk about, you know, I don't count the um, a, a monetary value on hulls. Uh, you know, the gas it took me to get to the ski club where I was shooting anyway is what it cost me to pick these hulls up. And I've, and I've got a bunch of them. Uh, you know, you can find the Rios, any, any, any hull out there, uh, is a good candidate to, to be loaded as long as it's, you know, it's got the, the plastic base. Uh, there's even, you know, some of the, uh, I think they're federal paper base hulls. There's a lot of data for those out there too. But anyway, um, two and three quarter inch, um, 12 gauge, we're going to be using, um, the CSD 118, uh, I think this is a SBL 32 from Precision. Uh, it's a BMP wad uh, sold by a, a few different, you know, places. It's an ounce and an eighth wad. Um, this wad does need to be slit. Kind of a pain in the butt kind of thing to do. Let me show you how I slit them. And I do these all at once. This is a... Uh, is a vice grip. This is a razor blade. So you just take him, line him up, and you go down. I spin him down. He's slit. He's ready to go. Okay. And what this does is it lets it open up when you, when you shoot so that you get a better pattern. If you don't slit and you just put the wad in there, you're going to end up with a super tight uh, slug effect, if you want to call it that. But I have already uh, actually slid a bunch of, 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 of wads. Uh, I'm on box number four. These are for a buddy of mine, uh, Nick, out in Texas. He's a long, long time Air Force buddy. Uh, if he's watching this show, he's gonna get to see how his, his, his hull or his shells are made. Um, Cause he's actually never even witnessed me do this. I've been loading, loading him up steel shot for ducks, uh, out in Texas, uh, yeah, for a few years. Uh, and when it started, that's how the, the Lee came about is, you know, uh, Nick was talking about, man, I, you know, I go through so many shells. And I was like, man, I can load you some shells up. Uh, but I didn't, you know, think to, to go out and spend, you know, two sixty five three hundred dollars on, on a mech to load somebody else. Cause I don't even shoot 12 gauge. Um, so I ended up running across this, uh, and, and my thought was, look here, if, if I can get something to knock the primers out, resize the holes, and give me a decent crimp, that, and really that was the biggest thing I was worried about is crimping, uh, you know, I'll give it a shot. So let's kind of go through here. I got RCBS uh, powder dropper here. Uh, I'm using steel powder. Uh, you know, the load that I'm, that I'm putting together is an eighth and an ounce or one and an eighth ounce of steel. This is number three steel. Uh, I'm loading Nick up, uh, probably five or six boxes of threes and I'm going to load him up five or six boxes of twos. He's got, I've got some three inch holes that we're going to do some twos in and I've got some three and a half inch holes back here that we're going to do twos in. And yes, we can do three and a half. Uh, in, in the leaf. We'll get to that uh, maybe in another video. But anyway, just wanted to show you how we put these together. So, and by the way, this load is published in a bunch of different places. Uh, it, it can be called the the HG load, the 10 gauge Oki load. Uh, it's super popular, it's super effective. Uh, if you wanna really know about this load, uh, just go on Google and search Dave in Arizona. Uh, 
or Dave in AZ and, uh, you know, I guess you could throw in uh, 12 gauge or, or HG load. He has put together a whole blog, uh, a web, web page of just a plethora of information. And, and you know, you, you can learn everything you need to know about this load from, from that area. Uh, but anyway, so we're going to drop our powder. And actually, you know what? Let, let's go. I've already pre-primed a bunch of holes. So I've got these ready to go. I'm about halfway through a box. Uh, I'm using Rio primers. Uh, they're the Type 209 G1000 Rios. That's what goes in these holes. They got a little bit bigger primer pocket. They do not like the Chetites, um, uh, the, the, the Win 209s. So I'm gonna go through the, the depriming and, and all that kind of stuff uh, real quick. Uh, I say that. Now I can't, I don't know where my sizing thing is. Hang on just a second, folks. All right, here we go. So this is the sizing die ring. So you put this on top of the shell. Now, you know, there's some process to this lead, but it works. So you stick that in there. And what that's doing is it's resizing the brass. Now, we got a primer knocked out. So, let me get my Rio primers. Just gonna get one out of here. All right, so there's one, we'll deal with that later. So we drop our primer in here. Now, set the hole down and that primer will seat, you'll feel it. So you cannot press any further. Now, when this raises up, here's a problem with the, the real high brass Rio hulls. There's, there's some, some chat ads that are like this too. The sizing ring has, will not come off of this. So, so there's one thing that I do is you just take your little vice grip, stick on both sides, push, and now it's off. You just give it a little spacer. So there you go. This hole is ready to be loaded. Now, I want to tell you another thing that you can do. If you're just running through these and you're not priming, you can take the priming base out of here and it'll give you a little bit more room <clears throat> on the real high brass holes. If you're running a shorter brass hole like this, you don't have any issues. You deprime size, stick it over here, throw your primer in it, boom, it all comes apart. Now, so we've got this, we're ready to go with this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop this charge. All right, I'm gonna fire up my scale. I'm gonna get me a wad. Wad's already been slit. Of course, like I said, I slit all these earlier. Put it in, drop your wad in. I just use my finger to make sure it is going down in there. Uh, so on steel shot, I do use, I use just a wad. Dip it in there. We're looking at for 492 grains. Um, so that, that initial wide dip gets you close. So there's 492 too, right? Ounce and an eighth. I always give it a little tap. As you can see, the shot is just below the wad. I mean, it could be just a little bit. And it's tight now. This load is tight. So here's another thing about the, the lead. <clears throat> You've got two pre-crimps. The one in the front is for an eight-point crimp. These are six points. So we're putting it in the back, six-point crimp. You line the crimp up facing you, and you go down. You know, you don't have to mash the bejesus out of it. You just go down. Now you've got you a nice pre-crimp, okay? You throw it over to the next one, which is your finished crimp. And this one, you gotta give it a little pressure. I spin it, give it a little pressure, and there you go. A nice finished shell, ready to go. Uh, my buddy Nick shoots these out of a, uh, a semi-auto. Uh, never really has any uh, you know, failure feed issues. Uh, you know, he, he, and he shoots a mess of these things. But you can load these, um, 
You know, these are these are number threes. You can put whatever steel shot size you want in there. I mean, I know guys that go all the way down to uh, BB, you know. So fork 92. They're just super popular. Uh, one stroke down on the pre print, move it over. Give him some pressure, turn it, there we go. See, nice, clean. I mean, it's not, it's not the most beautiful shell in the world, but but you know what's wrong with this shell? Not a daggum thing. This joker will kill birds just, just as good as the store bar. Uh, when it comes to cost, I haven't done a, a, an exact breakdown. Uh, obviously, I'm not charging Nick for these. You know, I do this for um, him letting me come out there and spend a week with him and, and kill ducks. That's 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 how I, I would pay him. So, um, it's just something I do. And matter of fact, even if I didn't kill ducks, I'd probably I'd probably still load them up and send them to him and and let him shoot them up. All right. So it's pretty easy, you know. Anyway, on cost, I think it's a little over ten dollars a box. I think about ten fifty a box is what it ends up being, um, and that's and that's at today's prices. You know, that's that's today's money. Um, as far as way these these shells pattern. Uh, Nick likes to, he, he gets real good uh, results with improved cylinder choke, uh, shooting threes. Sometimes I'll load him up fours, uh, but this year he wants threes and twos. Um, so that's what I'm doing. But yeah, improved cylinder, just, you know, make the sum up and, uh, there you go. Just another another one down. Uh, I am going to be doing some of these in three inch. The components are going to change a little bit. Um, I may do a separate little video on that um, because of you know some of the different things that you need to do with three inch. Um, Four ninety two, and then also I'm gonna load him. I think I've got about a box and a half, a three and a half inch that he wants done. So we'll do some three and a half inch. But yeah, the Lee load all man. You know, don't don't knock it till you tried it. Um, one thing that I do know, and I've read this, I'll go over this real quick. With this particular load. If you have, um, if you're shooting a, a low based hull, matter of fact, hang on. Matter of fact, this is one, matter of fact, see the three on it? So this is a hull that I loaded for Nick that we shot, but this is a Fiocchi. Uh, I've got a ton of these somewhere anyway, but anyway, these are range pickups. Uh, so when you do this and you crimp, the, the, the way this thing stacks in the hull, I mean, it's pretty tight. So what some people have recommended to do is to take a piece of PVC and run over the top of this when you crimp it, and that'll help keep this from bulging. There, there's some of these hulls that will bulge just because of the pressure of crimping it down. Um, I don't experience it with these Rios because they have a super high, uh, you know, brass on them. Um, but anyway, that, that's something to keep in mind. Um, but that's about it. I'm going to, I'm going to finish these up for Nick and, uh, and I may, I may get back on here and, and, and do a, another, a separate video, uh, for the, the three and the, and the three and a half. So Keep an eye out for those. Uh, if you got any comments, you know, okay. 
let me know. Drop a comment down there if you got any questions. Let me know. <laughs> this old lead, man, I'll tell you what. It's got an internal spring. I have no idea how to lube this joker. It squeaks and moans and groans, but it just keeps on going. <laughs> it's, it's pretty wild. All right, folks. Thanks for watching. Uh, see you on the next one. Bye.